All right, hello class. Today we're going to be looking at imperialism. Um, the definition of imperialism is when by policy by which a stronger nation attempts to create an empire by dominating a weaker nation economically, politically, culturally, or military. It's very similar to colonization unit where the European countries went to the Americas and conquered the Native Americans. Now we're going to actually look at the Europeans conquering other established nations. So what started imperialism? Imperialism is going to be begin with the Industrial Revolution, which we're studying now, because the governments or the countries are going to need more natural resources to produce the goods that they're trying to make. The second reason is economic motivations. And economic, remember, means money. Uh, they need raw materials, which is like natural resources. Uh, they want a cheap labor supply, which they're able to get that from Africa and Asia. Uh, they want new marketplaces to sell their goods. So if they colonize new areas, they're able to sell those areas, will sell those areas their goods and make more money. You're also going to see an uh, increase in tech, technological advances. Example of that is the Maxim gun, and that says machine gun. Um, and the fourth is the ideological motives. Basically, a desire to civilize non-Europeans, such as, again, Asians and Africans. Um, and it's called the white man's burden. We'll talk more about that in class. But basically, the Europeans saw the Africans as being uncivilized. They saw them as barbarians. So they thought it was their duty to go into Africa, civilize them, teach them Christianity, make them a better group of people. But in reality, they already had their own sense of government. During this time, you're going to have different ethnic groups that are going to join together. Got to pause. They're going to come together. They're going to have a love for their culture, a love for their nation. And that's where you get nationalism, which is going to be a problem um, that's going to lead up to World War I. But right now, nationalism is basically a 19th century. Anytime you see 19th century, I'm talking about the 1800 political changes. So you're going to have a unification movement, meaning people of all the same cultures are going to join together and become one. Um, now, one area they're going to try to imperialize or colonize is going to be Africa. That's why it's called the Scramble for Africa, because all the European countries are going to race and try to go into Africa and just snatch up land in Africa. Keep in mind, there's already people living in Africa. There's already established governments there. But the European powers, they have better weapons, better resources that they're able to go into Africa and colonize. So the European countries will colonize various African countries. And it is going to upset Africa. Next is the fact Route 10 is on campus. Route 10 is released. So King Le Leopold is going to start it all. He's going to um, basically be King Leopold of Belgium, which is a European country. He's going to begin the scramble. Um, and he's going to eventually get the control of the Congo area in Africa which is going to lead into the Berlin Conference, where all these European countries are going to come together and they're going to establish a set of agreed upon rules regarding competition among European powers, saying what countries can get what land in Africa. Um, Cecil Rhodes, he's a very popular name even today. He was a British imper um, imperialist. He is known for diamonds. He is going to find Rhodesia, but diamonds that we have now today it really all started with Cecil Rhodes. So what are going to be the effects of the scramble uh, for Africa? You're going to have European quests to control the natural resources, like they want to control what resources are coming from Africa. You're going to have drastic changes in the infrastructure, and that means like roads, buildings, highways of the continent. So you're going to have drastic changes in the infrastructure of the continent. You're going to have improvements in transportation and communication. Because now you have like the road road, um, it's easy for people to talk to each other. Let's switch from Africa to Asia. China, remember, closed its doors, but now by 1779, it did open up a trade with the British government. 
Uh, the British East Indian Company was importing opium into China, and that's a very addictive drug. It's like heroin. Um, so it, they made a lot of money off of it because a lot of Chinese were buying it. Opium addiction became widespread throughout China. So, of course, China does not like that. 1839, China wanted the trade to stop with the British East India Company. So a war is going to start between Britain and China. Britain's going to win and win some land. Um, later on, you will have a Boxer Rebellion. Again, they're going to try to force the foreigners out. They're not going to be successful. So Britain's going to be in China for a while. The foreigners are going to be in China for a while. Um, until we talk about when China becomes a communist nation, which we'll talk about that um, after World War II. So looking at Japan, they're going to open their doors in the mid-1800s. They are going to become a strong industrialized nation with the help of the United States. They are next door to Russia. So you are they're going to actually go into war with Russia. It's a Russia-Japanese war. Japan won it very easily. Russia was humiliated. So there was no land caught or changed during this war. Uh, India, which is a very popular country today as far as labor, cheap labor. Um, the British East India Company, as we see again, they were in China, they're in India also. They will gain a monopoly on trade with India. So as you see, although Britain lost the American colonies, they are still making money. So looking at India, Britain is going to approve its infrastructure, which again is roads, buildings, highways. British are going to um, build the world's third largest railroad system. All this is in India. Telephone and telegraph lines. Um, the dams, the bridges, and the canals, all this is in India. And when we study Gan um, Gandhi in class later on, that's when India is going to fight for its independence from Britain. You're also going to have the Sepo Rebellion, where Indian soldiers who served under British commanders are going to rebel and try to get Britain moved out. Again, that is not going to help. The British are still going to remain, um, and they're going to lose in that rebellion, and they're going to be able to squash it. It's not going to be into Gandhi that India is going to be able to gain its independence. Moving on to the United States, our country, our President Moreau, he's going to warn, this law is called the Moreau Doctrine, he's going to warn the European powers not to interfere with Western Hemisphere affairs, meaning y'all stay in the Eastern Hemisphere and the United States, we will focus on the Western Hemisphere, please do not come over here and try to colonize our areas, our land. Um, so looking at what countries did we add, we added Hawaii. Hawaii did not want to join the United States. We basically forced them to become part of the United States. They were an independent kingdom in the Pacific Republic in 1894. By 1898, we basically made them part of the United States because of their sugar resources. They had sugar resources that we wanted, sugar plantation. Um, we're also going to go to war with Spain in 1898. We're going to defeat them. So the U.S. is going to gain control of the Spanish colonies in the Pacific and the Caribbean. Example, Cuba and the Philippines. The Philippines thought that if they helped us fight the Spanish, that we would give them their independence. Well, we actually was making money from the Philippines. We remained, we didn't give them their independence, basically. That's what happened. So U.S. does not grant them their independence. They will not get their independence until 1946 from us. So, of course, they were kind of upset because they were trying to fight for their independence from Spain. They used the U.S. to help them, but then we, we don't give them up. Going down to the Panama um, Canal, that's in South America, Central America, exactly when you're looking at Panama. It is a quicker trip. Instead of sailing all the way around South America to get to the other side of Europe, you can just cut through in the Panama Canal, which so it's a very valuable piece. The U.S. is going to buy rights in 1903. We are also going to back the Panamanian independence, and Panama will become our protector. Like, we, we will protect this country from any other country trying to take it over. We don't take the country over ourselves because we have the canal, so we leave them, but we let them become independent and we protect them. So, no other country bothers them. The Panama Canal, which is a very important addition as far as with traveling, is completed, uh, is completed in 1914. And we'll talk more about imperialism in class, and that concludes the lecture video.